really like it because I know that someone is there to help me whenever I need something. A lot of kids say it's so, it must be so cool for you to have diabetes because you get to eat. And I'm like, well, it's not that fun because you, when I'm eating, I'm low and it just feels all awkward and I can't like pay attention to anything. And they usually are just there to help me whenever I need help with anything. As a parent, it's such a sense of security that a licensed nurse is on the other end and can answer questions about carbs, about blood sugar, about um, an injection site. I mean, they could ask anything that our other ladies at school might not know. And as a parent, it makes me feel very comfortable. And it gives me also a sense of security that Reagan is being well taken care of when she's at school. Generally what happened is the phone calls that I was receiving about her care started to taper off, which was to me a sign of success because then the virtual nurse was answering the questions that they would have normally directed to me. And so it kind of gave them some security in knowing that that resource was available to them. If I wasn't there or I couldn't be reached easily, then that virtual nurse was there for them. When you realize that the staff is willing to go an extra mile for you and participate in this program, that's very meaningful. Um, it's a resource to them, but collectively, they're a huge resource for us in taking care of our daughter. For us, it is so nice to have this program. Um, I think it is a program that could benefit more and more kids. I've taught in the school system for 21 years, and we had one child in the, in the past that has diabetes, and right now we have, I think, five students with diabetes, and that seems to be an ongoing trend. So I feel that if the virtual nurse stations can be sustained in schools, these remote, remote locations without school nurses, it's such an asset to the health care of these kids. I agree. Having the accessibility to a health care provider, even if it's by remote, um, is a tremendous resource. I, it just, I think it gives everybody a sense of comfort, that security, knowing that that resource is available. And if it's not available, you know, through the, the video part, at least by telephone, uh, and I'm, I'm kind of to a point where I can't imagine it not being there anymore. The um, program that I went through, the virtual nursing program, was a little bit scary when we first started learning about it because there was so much information about hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia and what to do and the, all the different things you had to know about a diabetic child. But after working with the girl day in and day out um, and referring back to the, the plan that she had and visiting with the nurse on the computer once or twice a week, um, all of that seemed to give me a lot more confidence to deal with giving her a shot and taking care of her. I am a teacher assistant and there's three other ones in, in our school that are teacher assistants and of course he was asking us because we're the ones with the most flexibility. After he asked us, we all just got very frightened and we all just kind of held our hands up and we said, we can't do that, you know. That's way too much responsibility and what if we do something wrong to the child? Or... And he said, well, I want you to think about it. So I went home that night, and I started thinking about it, and I just, I could not believe that that was such a selfish thing, that decision that I had made. Because someone has to take care of these kids, because none of us, families, know when it could be, it could be us tomorrow. We all have children and 
And being a parent, I would want someone willing that would want to take care of my child. And I came back and I said, I would love to do it. And it has been one of the most positive things that I've done in my life. Number one is to just keep in touch with that plan that we have because that was the biggest lifesaver that I had. The second biggest lifesaver was keep in touch with the nurses. We thought that her best care was being taken at, or given at school. And I told the nurses, I don't know how you can do it, how you can do your job and not be emotional or attached to a certain patient. And um, it's good to have someone else to talk to when you, uh, you know, have that responsibility. It is not that difficult, and that's what I've tried to tell people, that it isn't, it just isn't what I thought it was gonna be. It's, was, it's much easier. It's wonderful having the virtual nurses. If you ever have a question, you have so much support systems out there that you're never alone, never. Diabetes is a disease that takes a lot of time. And it takes, I always think it takes a village to manage diabetes. And the more people you can put out there to help them manage and help those kids grow up to be good, strong, healthy children, um, the, the better that is really for the future. When we look down the line, you know, there are acute complications that have to be dealt with right away. So you have to have somebody in the school that's capable and actually knows how to deal with those things that happen emergently or those issues that that child needs help with right away. But when we think down the line and manage, managing those kids' blood sugars so that they don't develop complications in the future and maybe we prevent some things in the future, I think the Virtual Nurse Project has been a great opportunity for that type of thing to happen and for us to help those kids with better management. You know, without somebody knowledgeable in the school, we would really have to look at managing blood sugars a lot um, differently, a lot looser, and not trying to get those kids in good control in their school so that we wouldn't put them at danger in the school. But when you have a knowledgeable person in the school, you can really manage those blood sugars, and with the help of that medical management plan, you can really look at giving that child the best possible medical care in a school setting. I'm constantly teaching somebody how to give an insulin injection or how to test blood sugars or when to um, take care of tests for ketones at home. I'm constantly doing delegation as a nurse and as an educator. Anyway, so as I look at delegating to UAP, I felt very comfortable with the process we put in place of providing them with the education and then doing a test of their skills and seeing how they did with those skills and then really stepping back and actually having an opportunity to observe and have that discussion with them over the virtual nurse program and over the internet about how, you know, how they were taken care of and, and what would we do in this situation. And really, delegation um, was really, it, it came as a give and take between myself and the UAP. You know, when I felt comfortable, when they felt comfortable with that delegation is when we took that step forward of saying, okay, I've watched, I've observed, we've discussed, and I feel comfortable that you can do this, that you can take this over, and I'm there. I'm available for you whenever you have questions. First of all, you kind of have to be open to ideas. 
and and that whole um, thought of how do you go forward with this type of project. And then I know for myself there was organization. How do you organize and how do you um, plan to get everybody on board and really get all the, the um, elements lined up so that you can effectively do it. Um, and then I think always that you have to have the end in mind and that is certainly for us happy healthy kids who are able to get through school and have a good school experience and yet manage their diabetes and not make it the major thing in their life. And when we keep that in mind and keep that focus going that we're here for the kids and we're all working for the same object, I think that really guides the Virtual Nurse Project.